I grew up into a sort of a family. My father was a traditional Chinese businessman and my mother was working always from the house. She was a designer who built furniture literally from our backyard. Every night before going to bed, she would read stories of fairy tales and different stories from faraway lands. After I drifted off to sleep with these stories, the next morning would find me wanting to recreate these stories using the materials that I found. Since I grew up in the Philippines, everything that I know, my inspiration, uh, my whole history, my culture, um, everything that I do is inspired by the Philippines. I feel very honored and feel very proud to be part of a campaign to try to rediscover and find out what is it that makes a Chinoy. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Josel Dosi. I'm the chairman and CEO of Eber Belena Cosmetics. I was raised here. Although my background is Chinese, I still believe that we are culturalized from a Chinese blood into a Filipino national. So I blended both together to best fit of what I am here in the Filipino community and work as a good Filipino citizen. I hope my little uh, sharing and wisdom will help uh, our next generation uh, to know what we're doing and where we're coming from and uh, looking forward to see the younger generation. I'm inviting everybody to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, my name is Chris Tan. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a life coach and I also act and I dabble in cryptocurrency. So growing up as a Chinoy was a little bit challenging because I had very sinked eyes and uh, I would always be made fun of because my eyes were so small. So I had a little bit of an insecurity about that growing up. I also am very Moreno, so that was a weird mix and people found that very weird and made fun of that in my school. Well, the good thing about me was I'm never really one to allow anyone to talk down on me or make fun of me. I actually looked at it as a challenge to be accepted, not just by me, but by my peers and to look beyond the physical. This is something that I think is important to be able to get out there so that people understand that Chinois are also Filipinos. And we are more Filipino than we are Chinese, actually, because this is where we grew up. Uh, although we bring our Chinese culture as a part of it, our hearts are still here in the Philippines. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. My name is Karen Ibasco, you miss her 2017. I'm a host, a speaker, and an image consultant. I grew up in a family where beauty wasn't so much focused on because in a Chinoy family, it was more of career. So I grew up not knowing that I look good or I can look good. I was just focused on studies, even though that's the kind of tradition I grew up. In time, I was built with the right values. As you grow up, you would understand more of beauty and in the processes or situations that you go through in life. But values being founded in you would be the greatest foundation that your parents can ever give you. And that's how I started. Values and education were the things that were instilled in me as young as it was. I never thought that 
I have made that impact in my community and I continually want to share my story and encourage other people to do the same in their own journey because we can achieve more together and we can encourage more people to be in the path where they are called and created to be. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Ian Lorenos. Uh, I'm a TV director and a filmmaker. I grew up in a, you can say, typical uh, Chinese-Filipino family. My dad was a merchant in the Visoria and my mom was a housewife. And we all studied in a Chinese-Filipino school. You can say that uh, my family was somehow in between traditional and modern Chinese-Filipino family. Modern in a way that they didn't force us to be the usual, you know, study in a Chinese school, go to a business university or college, and then do business. Rather, they just, you know, instill us that not just to be a businessman, but, you know, to be a good human being. I think that was very special to me, you know, living in a community where all stereotypically taught to be business people. My parents taught us the values of uh, helping, taught us the values of, uh, you know, good reputation. I'm happy to share uh, my story to all of you and I'm just proud to be here and to represent the Chinois. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hello, I'm Yvette Tan. I'm a writer. I write horror um, fiction. So I have a couple of books. When you grow up Chinoy, you don't know you're growing up Chinoy because you kind of live in a bubble. To be fair to my parents, my parents raised me very well, but I guess there, there was always the pressure to be a certain person that I wasn't, not just in the family, but also outside. Because of that, I got bullied. I didn't know how to deal with people. So I think this is what contributed to me escaping into books. I write a lot of fiction. The thing about fiction is it may not be real. It may, be, it may come from somebody else's imagination, but it's a bridge for the reader to think in a different way, to see things from a different point of view. And I think that holds power. I am so proud and so honored to be part of this campaign that promotes Filipino-Chinese culture because it's about time that people learned about Chinois and our contributions to society. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. My name is Stan C. I am a sportscaster and a voice talent. So when I was growing up, I was bullied because of my name. I was bullied because I was bookish. I was considered a nerdy kid. And in a way, pag na-color ka na into your little box, hindi na nila ma-i-imagine na you can step out of your box. When I was being bullied, it was really people making me feel bad about myself, making me feel that I shouldn't have any self-confidence, any self-esteem. So it wasn't necessarily about like what I wanted to be or who I am. It was more of who they thought I was. My goal was to reinvent myself. So that's why I wanted to do everything I wanted to do. What I've seen in my career is that a lot of the opportunities that opened up for me was because I put myself out there and I simply asked, even if the opportunity didn't exist. One of the things I really believe in is representation. It's something that I really stood for and wanted to push for. And I'm glad that this season we're expanding beyond coverage of Chinois inside Metro Manila. So it's great that we're hearing all these stories because it adds more diversity and more flavor into the overall picture of what being a Chinoy is. I've been a 
TV and events host for 15 years already. I'm also a content creator. I do lifestyle and travel vlogs. And I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm very fortunate in the fact that my parents are very supportive with my career of choice. Because as a Filipino Chinese, the usual stereotype is you're expected to be a doctor, an accountant, an engineer, and of course, an entrepreneur. But for us, me and my siblings, we all had different career paths and my parents were very, very supportive of each of our choices. So they would bring me to all the auditions and up until I was starting already and struggling to get a project on TV, they were there for me. They were truly 100% supportive and gave me 100% unconditional love and support. I I'm very lucky in that aspect. to be part of this roster, to share my story as a modern Chinoy, and to find representation for their own stories and their own journeys. Catch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, on CNN Philippines. I'm Father Ari D. of the Society of Jesus. I'm president of Saber School, a Chinese Filipino Catholic Jesuit school. My family moved to the suburbs, which San Juan was at that time, in the early 1960s. I think for my grandfather, that was like a step up, moving from Chinatown to the suburbs. No, there was nothing in Little Baguio in San Juan at that time. You look at the old pictures and, and you realize that. No? So because of that move, then they were very far from Chinatown, from the Chinese schools where my own parents studied. So they wanted to preserve a Chinese language and culture. Thankfully, by that time, by the early 60s, both Saber School and Immaculate Conception Academy were already in San Juan. They also made the move to the suburbs. So that's where uh, I was sent, along with my brothers. We you know, grew up in a Catholic environment where faith was something that was part of life. You know, we went to Catholic school. So I, I grew up in that kind of environment. What makes me proud as a Chinoy is the different layers of our identity. We belong to different worlds, for most of them Chinese and Filipino, and that's something to celebrate and be proud of. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only in CNN Philippines. My name is Mika, I'm a fashion model and I model professionally and internationally. I got into modeling uh, when I was 15. I actually didn't expect to get into modeling. I was rather scouted by a talent agent and when I tried it out, it, I think no one actually knew what was modeling <laughs> in the Chinoy community. Well, I would get comments like, what is she doing? It also made me question myself, what am I doing? <laughs> I was just having fun and learning from the mentors who discovered me in the talent agency. And eventually, I found a place for myself in this confusing world. I found that modeling actually made me found this group of people where I felt like I belonged to. It's really exciting because I get to share my story to um, everyone, to the Chinoy community, and it allows me to also learn more about myself and inspire others. And I hope a lot more of the Chinois would get into the type of field I did in modeling. Watch me as Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Philippines. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia-Pacific. 
Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. Nagpaprint ako ng mimeograph na 10 or 12 pinakat ko. So before you enter SM de Bameso, nagbibigay ako nail polish. Every bilena, 350 or 4 pesos lang at the time. I saw Tatang come in. I got scared. I was about to run. And he saw me said, Hey, come here, come here. I was really got scared already. Papagalitan ako. They said, What are you doing? I'm sending out so that people will know my nail polish. Ah, oh, that's the one that we ordered I mean, months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Yes. Where is it? Then I show him. Is it doing well? I said, yeah, Not bad. It's doing well. Kulang lang sa marketing at ano, uh, nobody knows it kasi very few people know. Oh, continue doing it, continue doing it. So I was so happy, kala ko magalit siya. So sabi ko, oh, actually from here, I plan to go to Siumart, uh, Kubaw na. O oh, sige, go, go. So if you're done, you go there. So lumakas ang loob ko. I'm Giselle Dossi, the chairman and CEO of Everbelena Cosmetics. They dubbed me as a father of Philippine Cosmetics. Father on the father's side is a pure Chinese, while my grandfather on the mother's side is half Filipino, but he was born in uh, China. I can safely say they both of them started from scratch, specifically my uh, Angkong on the mother's side. Practically, I call him the pioneer of Philippine cosmetics because he was the one who started it all. And uh, his first product then was pomade. I practically grew up more with my uncle than with my parents because my uncle as, at that time was pretty well off already. Uh, in fact, when I was young, he normally brings me, he went to the factory, we, I look at the factory, he explained to me what's this, what's that. It's basically divisoria, all the Chinese uh, wholesaler and traders. That was my exposure until his early death in 1969. I was only 11 then, so I was fortunate enough in that young age to get to learn a lot from my uncle. And I still remember when he said to me two things, you know? one is he said to Diong, so hok. In English, that means you have to be generous to have more blessing. A lot of times I found out that the people that I help without asking anything, I will meet them later in life, and then they are the ones helping me out. Sekaya, swear, the world is small. So you help somehow, somewhere, this help that you gave earlier, we'll always come back. I was 18 and my uncle asked me to help. So my first job was a messenger. So when they found out that I can do it easily, so they added more uh, responsibilities like purchasing, then I was able to do it also. Then later on, they add, oh, magbenta ka na rin ng product sa Divisoria. So I sell also the Divisoria. Oh, nung 78, 79 na, sabi ng uncle ko, oh, ikaw nang, ano, you go to Visayas Mindanao na to do the selling there. I 
So I remember during my uncle's time, selling was easy because he built a brand. He was a brand builder. I remember my uncle told me, once you build your brand well, distribute well, and when the product selling, you're like printing money. So that's what I did. Their brand at that time was Ever Belena. So we were able to meet together and he gave me the authority to import and also he let me use the brand to be registered here. So other than the Philippines, I own Ever Belena, the brand itself. And Ever Belena in uh, Hokkien or Mandarin means forever beautiful lady. Belena is Bile is beautiful and Na is lady. So that's why it's called Ever Belena. And then when I imported it the first time, it was sold easily because for the Filipino, they say, Bili na, click eh. Way back in 1983, I started with only four people. That's myself, my sister, and then a driver and a finante. After a year and a half, I started to hire a beauty consultant to man the store. So I need more products. So from nail polish, I expanded to lipstick, eyeliner, eyeshadow, and uh, face powders. And uh, with the help of this uh, beauty consultant, I was able to sell more. There was a time in 1980, when I was with my friend, they're both girls. Uh, we were buying a gift, so the younger sister was, I told her, you just wait there at the Cafe LSE, at Shumart Makati then. And I saw my friend talking with uh, an elderly girl with a jacket. So when I post, uy, si Henry C too. So when she down, I said, si it's a Chinese uh, Mr. C. Si uh, good afternoon ho. Oh. Oh, you, you guys, what do you do? And we make cuento already, ma 30 minutes. So sabi niya, are you guys busy? No, 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 we're not doing anything. So, yeah, uh, come to my, you know, my office here at Makati Stock Exchange. What caught my attention immediately when I enter was a big eagle. It's a real eagle na, na preserved. I said, Mr. C, why the eagle? Sabi niya, the eagle soars high glides in the air and when you up there you, so, you see everything so I go okay yeah, nah. then when you see a prey like let's say my daga or whatever they will dive grab that prey and go up again so I go wow so that means you grab the opportunity again then you go back again and maximize what you have I go, yeah that's 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 it so that's the first time I encounter Mr. Henry C The first time I was the one personally went to Shumart, the wooden wooden Shumart built office where the purchasing department is. When I was there to offer, and the Tatang, the Mrs. Henry C. Senior, saw me there. He said, "Oh, kid, come here. What are you doing here?" So I said, oh, "I'm showing the new product. Oh, what's that? Nail polish." Okay, liga, liga. He come to my office. Then he asked the purchasing guy sa uh, cosmetics. Sabi niya, oh, help him. Order, order kayo sa kanya. So, at that time, there's only S.U. Marquiapo, Makati, and uh, Cubao. Only three stores. So, he made a good or initial order with me. And signed by him. Sayang lang, I was not able to photocopy and frame it. If I only knew it, I should have done it. Before, this is the first order na siya mismo ang nagpirma. And also, the other thing that I learned from him was it's easier to earn one peso from one million people than to earn one million from one person. Then I asked Mr. C, sino yung in one person? Sabi niya, ako, can you earn one million from me? Sabi ko, 
I don't know how to do it. Sabi ko, at that time. So that's why all my products are pangmasa. When I was doing the nail polish business, I expanded to supplying the packaging and raw material. First is to Caronia, then second was to Bobby or Chick, which is uh, one of the companies of Mr. Jiang Go Kong Wei. Then one day he called me up. Joseldo, I need you to help us. I said, why? Please bring Mrs. Jiang Go Kong Wei. Do you need to meet her? Because they're opening up uh, Robinson Galleria. So, okay, I was introduced to uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Gokongwei, the, the wife of Mr. John. I said, uh, I need more products for Galleria. So, we flew to Taiwan to buy a lot of things. So, we're so happy that uh, we ordered so much. So, when we came home, I found out that I don't have enough capital. So, I went back to see Mrs. John. So, I was already to be my Ninang in my casa. I said, Ninang. I got a big problem. So, Why? What the problem? I don't have enough capital. And they said, uh, you talk to your Ninong. And he said, your Ninong is on the other side at uh, Midtown Ramada Hotel. So he, she called up, okay, you go, go see uh, your Ninong. So I immediately walked over to Midtown Ramada. So after he finished, he said, oh, what's your problem? What do you need? Kamusta ang shopping nyo ni ano, ng Ninong mo? Sabi ko, maganda ko shopping namin. Dami niya bili, 10 to 12 million. Oh, very good. Sabi ko, but I don't have enough cash. How, how much do you need? Sabi ko, mga 4 million ho. Uh, anong plano mo? Siyempre, at that time, he was the director of PCI Bank and Far East Bank. Sabi ko, baka I can borrow from your bank. Uh, no, 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 no. What's your bank? Sabi ko, PDCOM. And then sabi niya, uh, okay, I'll call up. So the secretary called up, PBCOM, called up the bank president. And the secretary said, Sir, he's in a board meeting. Tell him it's me calling him. This is from the office of Mr. Jiang Go Kongwei. So labas siya. Labas yung bank president. So kinausap siya. Tapos nung kinausap, what's your no, company name? Sabi ko, at that time was DSS Trading. Anong branch? Sabi ko, Kalokan ho. Oh, 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 he, will, he will borrow 4 million. I will guarantee, sabi niya. Okay, okay, so that makes me another lesson na uh, it's the character. No, walang collateral. Credibility, pirma, pirma lang. So that's what I'm enjoying now because of what they teach me before to protect your credibility. You can lose money, but very hard to earn back your credibility. I think the turning point or the advantage I got was the rich wisdom that I learned from them. Nagkaroon ako ng advantage on more than 30 years. Now people don't don't have the chance to know it. Like, sino nakaka-usap ka sa dalawang Taipan when you were young? So I was able to learn from them and keep it in my brain and then use it at the right time, at the right moment. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Japan Parts Trading Center Dash Cargo, Propelling Possibilities for your copying and printing needs, it must be sharp. Philippine Si Pyok Song Lim Musical Federation Association. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nang Family. Enrique Chua. Lee Poe Chin. Albert Ko. Stephen Sia. Rosalina Yasai Anson Tan 
Sherwin Choi. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Actually, in the year 2000,、uh, I was very hands-on. From 83 to year 2000, I realized that I cannot do it on my own. At that point, I was in my early 40s. It's so hard. To break that 200, 300 million sales a year, then I see, I saw what the other guys are doing, the big guys. So you have to hire good people, you have to get good professionals and help you run the company. So that's what I did. This is Denis Simon, yes, my CSMO. Way back 2014, when I sent Denis to San Francisco to study, so I sent her to UC Berkeley. Two months before she's gonna graduate, I remember that was February or March. Already she told me that I got an offer here, fifty-five thousand dollars a month. So I just let her go. So time is now. I say, may two three months was it? So on the month that she's graduating. I got a bit scared already. From fifty-five, like seventy-five thousand dollar, na ang offer sa kanya. I have to fly to San Francisco and practically drag her home. Because in my mind, when she, when pag nakumpis ayon magwork sa US, hindi na uuwi yan eh. So patay ako dito. Wala ako ng next gen dito sa Everbile na. So in one of our conversations there in San Francisco, I said, look. Yeah, you can have seventy-five thousand dollar now. After ten years, how far can you go? One twenty, one fifty. But here, ten years after, you own the company. Na hindi na ako. So it will be your time already. Now you'll be the one to succeed me, because I'm very optimistic you can do it. So finally, it I was I was able to convince her. Eh, tong anak mo magaling talaga masyado. Eh. Alam mo what she said one time before ano, I left at that time. How much will you pay me? <laughs> Sabi ko, of course not seventy five thousand dollar. So if you want to compute, I will compute how much did I invest on you. Tapos na nang joke lang dad. Bakak makaisa ako sa iyo. When she came in 2014, I remember the story of、uh, Henry C and John Gokongwe. Let them start at ground zero. So when she came in, her initial salary was twenty thousand. So I gave her the hardest account, which was a、uh, convenience store chain. Pena hirap ako talaga siya. Alam ko mahirap na account yun. So she started from there, and slowly, I, I, if kung kaya niya, she, I know she will be promoted. So when I gave her to my sales manager, I said,、uh, Noel, the manager, have to go. Don't treat her as my daughter. Treat her as A normal one, okay. So okay. So after six months, I ask the manager, "Oh, come on, Sasi Dennis. So far, so good. Hopefully, may ano may follow through. So the manager cannot say, 'Pwede na o hindi.' After a year and a half, I ask her again, 'Come on, Sasi Dennis. Boss, 'pwede na. Suerte kayo. May success, success, okay na.'" So I believe every Belena will be in good hands the next thirty, forty years, and、uh, these are her brainchild, the Hello Glow, Ever Organics, Hyalu. These are all skin, generally skincare lines that I don't understand. I remember that time when I was telling my dad, "Let's try Korean skincare." He would tell me, "Bebenta ba yan? Ang ganda na ng benta ng makeup, das ginagalaw mo pa." But One of our hero products also is actually our soothing gels. When I first introduced the soothing gel to my dad, he actually said, "Who uses that?" Because aloe vera lang yun eh. 
But I told him that the market was huge, and lo and behold, it's actually one of our top SKUs right now. Um, and I think it's a blessing that we were able to research these items before the pandemic. Up to now, I can see the hunger in her, na hindi siya relax. And also, I make her very uh, prudent. So that's the way I uh, bring up my kids. Very grounded, simple life lang, walang luxury. My dad always says that when we're working, we're working beyond ourselves. We have over 1,800 people trusting on Everblana for their livelihood. That's why it's very important for us to make wise decisions that are good for the business because these decisions will also be good for the people who trust on Everblana. The quality is the number one, pinaka important. So I always say it should be of global quality. Packaging should be at par with the branded ones, yung uh, most expensive, uh, to make that uh, our customer feel na, wow, mura siya. And then also the price. I always say the price should be not more than 50% of your daily wage. So let's say today, our daily wage is 550 or 600. So it should be not more than 250 or 300. Kasi pag you go over that, hindi na siya essential, nagiging luxury na siya. That's why when we were starting, tagline ko is, Looking good is no longer luxury. Because when we're starting, makeup brands are very expensive. So that's why I started it. Looking good is no longer luxury. Who else would be the father of Philippine Cosmetics? You know, I don't see any other brand in the market that has the same kind of legacy that Everblana has and the same kind of personality behind it. So I think What's nice about my dad is beyond just being a business owner, he's already known as a personality for giving back to women's associations and women's nonprofit um, foundations. Basically encouraging women's empowerment. And I think that's something people don't know a lot about my dad, that he's actually very passionate in really um, enabling and empowering women. And I think that's also why he was able to trust me. I think when I started, I remember um, some people, especially in Chinese Filipino culture, asking my dad, Bakit hindi lalake? Why put the knees there? And I remember him telling them, it's not about your gender or your sex, it's about your competency. And all genders have equal competency and equal opportunity for as long as they work for it and work towards it. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Ever Belena PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Trading Center. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. Phil Flex Wires and Cables. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nung Family. Albert Ko. Stephen Sia. Rosalina Yasai, Li Hongming. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. They keep on telling people I'm the father of Philippine cosmetic. Well, I, I appreciate that. Probably because siguro, I'm the oldest now siguro in this line of business. And uh, that's why very important for me is a succession. This is the first one that I'll be saying that I'm passing the baton to my daughter already. I think for Chinoy families, very important yung concept of the family name. Just really upholding that and making sure that that name is not besmirched. A lot of businesses are hinged on the family name, right? And that goes uh, in, in different directions, hindi lang for Chinois. So even outside of the Chinoy community. 
So I think there's, it's very interesting to see na ano, na there are people who believe that their family business is their legacy. Kasi that's the mark that they've left on the world. Being surrounded by uh, Filipino Chinese friends, um, relatives, I can see a lot of businesses being passed on from one generation to another. And I think it's because the elders were able to instill a lot of the good Chinoy qualities like hard work, perseverance, um, grit. So I see a lot of mga uh, businesses na being handled well by the second or third generation. On the other hand, I see a lot of ano rin naman, second or third generation who choose not to work with the family business. So before, you wouldn't see that. Parang it's, it's a no-brainer. If you're a daughter or a granddaughter of a tycoon, you definitely have to work in the family business. But now, the options are more. I think it's, uh, it's some sort of uh, wealth preservation. But at the same time, it's what we call legacy then. Diba? Most of the Chinois, the tycoons, make their businesses not just for them or for their children. Their plan, like three generations ahead. I think that's okay. As long as we provide not just the monetary castle, or you can say that, but also the values behind, behind the business should be passed on to the next generations as well. Modern Chinoy should be modern. They should be updated. They should know what's happening, di ba? And because of the social media, all the young generation are so updated. Kami ni ng old guys na nalalaos eh. So that's what I want to share with the, all our other uh, uh, next gen. So these are the things na I learned from my angkong and my and the two two taipans. Actually, uh, when you say the burn bridges in Chinese, we say ham ham lo, pera lang yan eh. So, why burn bridges when it's only money? For me, money is just a commodity. Madaling kitain yan. When you burn bridges, ang hirap i-repair. So, all the same, malalim ang galit ko sa'yo. I will not say burn the bridge. Kasi God knows what happens next. Pag kami, after a year or two, I need you pala kasi magkakasalubong tayo. Malit ang mundo eh. So once that happened, because we burn bridges, hindi na ako makakatawid. So better not to burn bridges. Ano lang, positivity, ano lang negativity. So that's what I learned from the both of the Taipans, which I'm lucky and blessed to have that opportunity now. So this is what I'm sharing to my kids and to all the other upcoming Chinese uh, businessmen mga young generation, you have to protect your credibility. In the end, in the latter years of your business life, that will help you as a good entrepreneur. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders was brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities.